Hey guys, it's uh, Nick here with Mechanic Built, and today we're going to be working on my personal vehicle. Don't mind the phone, it's just doing a preview for the GoPro, so I just have a good angle for you guys. However, today we're going to be changing out the wheel sensors. In this video, what you're going to need is, and just like that, just with magic, here's the tools that you're going to be needing. You're going to need a ratchet, an 8mm, uh, a 10mm, a big screwdriver, a little screwdriver, and this is completely optional, but you could use a electric pack wrench and you're gonna need a 19 millimeter to take off the wheels and take off the one bolt on the stabilizer link because if you can see on the new one here, we got a new bracket. And as you can see with the old bracket, this has 165,000 miles on it. This is all brand new. So we're just gonna replace the bracket since it came with it. Some videos show that you could just, and if you don't have the tools to take off the stabilizer link, it's no big issue. You could just take off the wire like this off the bracket or and put it on the old one but since like i said we have the tools here we're going to change out the bracket so let's begin now this is i'm not saying this is a good way to jack up the car which is on a uh inclined driveway but as long as you got jack stands or the car on jack stands and the jack as extra support let's go ahead and take off this tire and if you don't have an impact wrench you definitely want to do this tire on the ground by or uh, breaking the nuts uh while the tires on the ground just due to the fact that you know as you can see here in the video it's spinning and don't mind my horrible plastic dip but let's start and take off the wheel all right once the wheel's off just gonna take a visual inspection another thing too the reason why we know that the wheel sensors are going out is um is that all the lights went off on the car which would be the abs attraction control parking sensor saying was going out just because these sensors um weren't reading properly so pretty much all you got to do is break this you could use a screwdriver or you could just pull it by hand oh wow i might have to get a screwdriver anyways let's just grab all our tools anyways so here we go, we just pop this right out, just like that. And like I said, you could just pop the old wire off this bracket. You just gotta be careful because this is 165 miles worth of crud on here. So all you gotta do is just carefully pop that out. You could change out the wire this way, but that's what we're not gonna do. And there's another bracket right here holding it. And all you gotta do is take out the eight millimeter bolt here which we're gonna use an extender. Make sure we go lefty loosey. Make sure we keep this bolt safe. There's our old wheel sensor, but it just has a lot of crap on it. And I wouldn't be surprised that, you know, just, you know, this car only has, this car's only five years old, but with 165,000 miles, this thing has seen a lot of miles, as you can see. So the other thing too, like people I've seen had issues with the sensors. Now, let me just readjust the camera a bit here so you guys can see it better. What I noticed what would be easy to do is actually take off this whole entire bracket, this little plastic bracket here. And to do that, we're gonna take our big screwdriver, go in around here, and we're gonna pop off this little rip, plastic rivet. Once we get that off, that just pops right off as you can see. And then we take our 10 millimeter. You might have to use a ratchet, but I could easily take this off by hand. Keep that up there, pull the splash guard back, and then now this bracket's here. Now there's these little red tabs in here that uh, prevent you from the sensor from unclipping. So what we, what I found is pretty easy is just try to get underneath here with a small screwdriver. Just gotta be careful because sometimes you can break these. Um, so. We're waiting. This might take you a good minute, especially if you're just fighting all this dirt, as you can see, it's just falling off. A lot of road tripping in this car. And just like that, I just broke the plastic clip. They ask you how you are, and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. As you can see, nobody's perfect. Last one I was able to save. Looks like we're not gonna be able to save this one. So we just need to get it pulled out. So at this point, so we knew that we broke it, it's just a matter of trying to 
get it to pop out now. Sometimes you could push them right out from where it's holding it in. Just like that, we got the sensor out. It was a bit more of a pain in the ass than the other side. But I just wanna make sure we didn't mess up the clip, which we didn't. So pretty much all we gotta do now is take the old bracket off here, which we could use our drill. Pop this back in. And then now we're ready to put in the new sensor. Now we got our new sensor here. As you can see, this is how we want to do it. Um, just kind of follow and make sure this is the right one, which I already know this one is. Uh, make sure the bracket matches up too, because if you buy them in pairs, which I usually replace when it comes to suspension parts, I replace everything in pairs. You know, make sure the bracket looks right. If the bracket looks right. All you gotta do is just pop this sucker on. I push down on the stabilizer and make the best we can. And there you go. We'll just thread this bolt in and then we'll let the power tool do the rest. Okay, it's on there. Pop this rivet in. Screw back on. Okay, just get it nice and snug with your 10. And then you should be able to see it where the old uh, wire was sitting. So it was on this side. Just pop this sucker. There you go. That should be just a matter of it clipping. There you go. Now this piece right here, it just clips right in here. Put the bolt right back in. Grab your eight millimeter, which my tools are on the floor for this one. So there you go. That didn't take us very long. It took us probably a matter of like 10, 15 minutes the most to do. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and definitely hit a like, definitely hit that subscribe button. And uh, there will be more little how-to videos. And if you guys have any questions about a Ford Fusion Energy or Ford Fusion Hybrid, let me know. I've had this car for 165,000 miles and it's done me well. And this is actually the first major issue that I've actually had with it. Other than that, guys, my name is Speedy and this is Mechanic Built. Until next time.